Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Virginia Association for Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers Virtual Transfer College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions that's happening as part of this virtual college fair and all are being recorded and will be available on the same website where you registered for this session in about a week's time. Now, I'd like to turn it over to our presenters and we'll get started this evening with East Carolina University. All right, hi everyone. I'm just gonna share my screen here. All right, so good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, my name is Allie Hortonberry. So I'm actually the first year and transfer admission counselor for students within the states of Virginia, DC, and Maryland. So let's just get started here with a few quick facts about ECU. So if you're unfamiliar with ECU, we are a large state institution within North Carolina. We are a public university, a part of the UNC system. We have about 28,651 totally enrolled students, that's across um, undergraduate, graduate, um, PhD, and so on and so forth. We have about a 19 to one student faculty ratio, however, so for a large campus, we can maintain that nice small classroom size with direct access to your professors. We do have that average class size of 28, so nice and small, like I said. Of our almost 29,000 total enrolled students, we do have about 90% coming from within the state of North Carolina and 10% coming from out of state. Um, and most of the out of state students will come from Virginia, so you'll be in good company there. We do have over 500 student clubs and organizations with 15 campus ministries and 38 Greek organizations. If you wanna take a look at all of our organizations, that information is online and you can actually search by your interest, which is pretty cool. We also have 15 different residence halls uh, located over three different neighborhoods. We have 31 dining locations, which is going to include two dining halls, six convenience markets, and 23 national names like Chick-fil-A, Raising Cane, Starbucks, Chili's. We also have some alternating food trucks that come out to our campus, which our student activities will actually um, go ahead and announce so you'll, you'll kind of know what's going on and what food trucks coming that week and what dining options you have. For academics, we offer 84 bachelor's degrees, 70 master's degrees, and 18 doctoral programs. So you can um, pursue whatever you know um, career path you're looking at, but our top undergraduate programs are gonna include nursing. That's definitely our most popular. We actually graduate the most nurses and teachers in the state of North Carolina. Um, and then right behind nursing, you're gonna have management, marketing, psychology, and elementary education. So a nice broad um, spectrum there of majors for you to choose from. We are the only school within the state of North Carolina, both private or public, that has a dental school, a medical school, and a college of engineering at the same institution. For location, if you're, um, if you're unfamiliar with ECU, we are in Greenville, North Carolina, right there at the coast. So there's a nice map for you that's got some major cities on the East Coast so you can kind of see how far you are. So Greenville is going to have our main campus, our athletics facilities, our health sciences campus, and our West Research campus. We also have ECU Outer Banks, which is about two hours from our main campus, and houses our Integrated Coastal Studies program. To give you guys an idea, I actually live in Richmond and work from home. Um, it takes me about two and a half hours to get to campus. So from D.C., you're looking at about a four or five hour drive. From Charlottesville, it's about three. Um, for athletics right here, you see we have 16 different NCAA Division I sports. We also have um, some intramural sports. Um, you can take a look at our athletics page online to see if we have the sport that you're interested in pursuing in your college career. We participate in the American Athletic Conference, and you do get free tickets for regular season home games, so that's really popular. You can see Dowdy Ficklin down in the bottom right corner is packed. Um, our football games are extremely popular amongst our students, as well as people in Greenville. So the important stuff to apply to ECU, you can apply um, as a Virginia student through Common App or directly through our Navigator portal, which you can find on our website. It is an online application and we do require an essay. We'll need, um, for a transfer applicant, we'll need your official college transcript or transcripts if you've been to multiple colleges. We will need a high school transcript if you have less than 24 college credit hours. We do look that students have a 2.0 minimum GPA. 
as well as an equivalent to English 1100. And you can inquire about that if you're a little bit confused about if your English class that you've taken is equivalent to our English 1100. And there is a $75 application fee. We do have fee waivers available. You'll just hit us up at our email and we'll get you through that process. So you can follow us on social media. We have um, ECU Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. There's also ECU admissions specifically on Instagram. And then I also encourage you to take a look at all the different ECU pages for our um, clubs and organizations, our sports teams, our specific departments, whatever you are interested in, that's a great way to get connected. And then that's our email address, admissions at ecu.edu. We are also offering in-person tours and virtual tours. We have live info sessions for both interested students and admitted students. And we have student panels if you'd like to hear from some current students. You can get all that information at our visit webpage. And our application for fall 2021 is going to close on June 28th. If you're not looking at um, applying for this fall and you're going to be coming here like fall 2022, you want an idea of when that's going to open. Our application typically opens around August 1st. So I've kept these dates in here so you can kind of get an idea. Our scholarship deadlines usually fall between December and January, sometimes pushing it out to February, depending on the year. So this is how you can contact me. Like I said, I'll be your admissions counselor for ECU. So you can contact me. I have my phone number, um, my text message number, and my email there. So thank you so much for joining us again. And go Pirates. Great. Thank you so much, Allie. Our next presentation this evening comes to us from the University of Pittsburgh. Hi, everybody. Hang on a second. Okay, uh, so thank you for listening to me talk about the University of Pittsburgh for six minutes. What I have done um, for this presentation is put together uh, the five things that I really wanna hit and highlight for anybody who is interested in learning about the University of Pittsburgh. And the first one of those five highlights is the academic options and flexibility available through the university. Uh, within the University of Pittsburgh on the Pittsburgh campus, there are 10 undergraduate schools which house collectively well over 100 majors, minors, and certificates to choose from, many of which can be mixed and matched. Uh, for example, within our Dietrich School of Arts and Sciences, which houses about 90 of those 100 some odd majors, uh, over a third of the students in that school are able to double major and combine their interests into a degree that's really unique to them. Of those 10 schools, uh, five of those are available for direct entry with your application. Uh, the other five are upper level division schools, which means you are able to apply into them um, as a transfer student, but there may be requirements in terms of how many credits you need um, in order to be eligible to apply. So just keep that in mind as you're looking at the programs that you're considering. As you saw on that screen as well, there are uh, just over 19,000 um, undergraduate students as well as a 14 to one student to faculty ratio. So we hit that really good balance of being a larger institution and having that smaller class size um, that a lot of students really uh, enjoy. The second of those important things that I like to highlight when I'm teaching students about the University of Pittsburgh is the reputation and rankings of the school. You can see some of the highlights over here on the left where the number one public university in the Northeast United States as rated by the Wall Street Journal and Times Higher Education. Uh, we're the number 19 public college or university as per the new, uh, US News and World Report. Uh, among global universities, we're number 47. And relevant to right now, we're in the top 10 for the best universities for solving the pandemic. Uh, some of the other rankings that uh, I have on this screen here um, include being a military friendly school, being a green college, uh, being listed among colleges that pay you back, uh, being a college that is friendly to the LGBTQ plus community. Um, and there's even more rankings. I really encourage you to explore, um, look up what is important to you and see how the University of Pittsburgh fares um, because there are a lot of really interesting ones like uh, our philosophy department has been uh, ranked very highly on the global scale for several years. So they get really uh, specific as well. Um, I definitely encourage continuing to look at that. Number three is that you would be in the city of Pittsburgh, which is an urban location and it is considered a most livable city. Uh, last I checked, we were rated the number three most livable city per The Economist. Uh, right in front of us, I believe, was Honolulu, Hawaii um, and Atlanta, Georgia. So um, 
the, the University of Pittsburgh is housed in a really, really um, ideal location. And the city is very well accessible to its students um, with things like free, uh, fair free public transportation across the entire city, um, free or discounted admission to museums and cultural um, events and sporting events and things like that that make the city really exciting uh, for Pitt students to have their college experience there. My slides are being a little slow. The number four thing that I really uh, like to highlight is the prevalence of research on Pitt's campus. Um, if research is something that is interesting to you, Pitt is a decent place to consider um, because research is available to undergraduate students as early as their first year on campus. We actually have an entire office of undergraduate research studies um, that helps to partner, uh, coordinate students up and partner them with um, research opportunities as undergraduate level students. And within that office houses the first experience in research program, uh, which gets students going um, if they've never been involved in research before. So um, definitely something available no matter what your academic interest is. Uh, obviously we have laboratory research facilities, but if you are interested in doing research in terms of linguistics or education or um, anything like that, research is going on in all departments all the time across campus. Finally, the number five thing that I like to hit and highlight when I'm teaching students about the University of Pittsburgh is that we offer guaranteed internships to every single student on Pitt's campus. Um, the way that you go about doing this is working with our career center. Um, it's pretty standard uh, career center. You meet with a career advisor. They can help navigate your pathway to um, the career of your choice. And if you work with this office and complete a few checklist items, things like uh, having them critique a resume, having them uh, conduct a mock interview with you, things like that, they'll guarantee you placement in an internship that's relevant to your field. And it is in part our placement in the city of Pittsburgh uh, that allows us to offer that to every single student, regardless of the program that they're looking for, um, because in the city, uh, pretty much every field that we offer on campus is represented across the city. So um, that is a really unique opportunity for students to start getting that uh, critical um, uh, career uh, development experience um, in their time as undergraduate students at Pitt. If you are interested in applying to the University of Pittsburgh, it is a very simple process. Uh, we obviously need an application, an application fee or a fee waiver. Um, academic records, uh, in some cases, uh, we will require your final high school transcript. In other cases, we may only ask for your college transcripts. It's always best to reach out to see which ones you need to send us. Uh, things to keep in mind are any applicable supplemental information. There are some programs that require different things than other programs. For example, uh, you can see on the right here, the School of Education, the School of Health and Rehabilitation Sciences, the School of Social Work, they all have additional supplemental materials that you need to send um, like an additional application form or an additional essay, something like that. Um, our School of Nursing as well will ask students to submit standardized test scores and things like that um, to just keep um, an eye on depending on the program that you're applying to. And then finally, we ask you to answer short answer questions, describing your work and life experiences, experiences since you graduated from high school. Um, and if you've had any challenges in academics before, um, you know, what sort of changes have you made and how can you be more successful in the future? Um, if you have any questions and need to reach out to somebody, please email us in that email address at the top right of the screen. Um, if you send an email with any question at all to that email address, we will put you in touch with the person who is best equipped to answer your question. Um, so definitely feel free to send us anything there. And I hope to hear from you and see your application uh, to the University of Pittsburgh soon. And that's all I've got. <laughs> Thank you so much. Our next presentation this evening comes to us from Savannah College of Art and Design. Thank you, Owen. Hey guys, my name is Leah Bear. I'm the Assistant Director of Admission here at the Savannah College of Art and Design. And to give you a brief history, SCAD was founded in 1978, and for more than 40 creative years, we've grown to become the most comprehensive and connected art and design university in the world. That means we have campus locations in Atlanta, Georgia, a study abroad location located in the south of France in Lacoste, Savannah, Georgia, and then of course our e-learning platform. Now, our university is incredibly diverse with about 15,000 students coming to us from all 50 states and over 100 different countries. We even have a 25% student body population that is international. 
And we offer more programs of study and specialization than any other art and design university in the US. That means we offer more than 100 degree programs across 40 majors and 75 minors. Now, no matter what major you end up in at SCAD, career preparation is at the heart of our mission, which is evident by the university's stellar alumni employment rate of 99%. That means 99% of the spring 2019 alumni were either employed, seeking further education, or both within 10 months of graduation. 91% of those students were doing so in a creative field. Now, these extraordinary numbers are a true testament to our talented and ambitious students, and they speak volumes about the quality of a SCAD education. Now, SCAD alumni and their learn are everywhere. Following his graduation from SCAD, fashion designer and SCAD alum Christopher John Rogers launched his line with his fellow SCAD weave. You may have even seen his fantastical garments on icons like Michelle Obama, Lizzo, and even Lady Gaga. Here at SCAD, we champion a culture of small class settings and individualized attention for each and every one of our students. So from the boardroom to the classroom, our professors are here to help leverage their professional experience and their valuable network to help you succeed in today's ever-changing global marketplace. So whether you envision yourself on the runway or the carpet or even the cover of the board, there's a place here for you at SCAD. Now, as a student, you'll have the opportunity to collaborate with leading companies through SCAD Pro. This is where our students dream of design solutions for global brands. Recently, our students reimagined Disney resorts, pitched the future of advertising to Google, and even marketed a driverless car for Volvo. SCAD Pro has hosted more than 500 collaborations across 300 top brands. And these SCAD Pro assignments have actually led to over 200 direct job offers proving that real world experience really is gonna set you apart and help land you that dream job. Now, SCAD offers everything to suit your interest in and out of the classroom too. At our Atlanta and our Savannah locations, there are more than 100 student clubs from cultural, community, and leadership organizations to academic and special interest. We also have a competitive intercollegiate athletics program and intramural sports if you're an athlete. And when you're accepted to SCAD, you're accepted to all of our campus locations. You can start your career at SCAD in Atlanta, a thriving business and film production hub. Then venture off to the peaceful and scenic hills of beautiful Lacoste in the south of France. And then circle back across the Atlantic to the historic squares and cobblestone streets of Savannah. And of course, SCAD e-learning is available anywhere, anytime. Now, if I have any high school students joining me today or viewing this recording, or even if you know someone who's in high school that might benefit, we do offer a few summer programs for high school students. We offer both one week and five week programs where students can earn college credit. So pass that along if you know anybody who might be interested. Now, if you're ready to get your application started, the first step is to complete your application with us. We do a 10 minute initial application on our website, or you can also complete the application through Common App. We'll ask you for a number of things that you'll work with your personalized admissions advisor to submit at your own pace. First is likely gonna be transcripts, either from high school and or college, depending on how many credits you have. And then you may have to submit transcripts, again, depending on how many college credits you have. Typically anything over 27 credit hours, and we just need your transcripts. In the meantime, we'd love for you to connect with us and visit us. We are offering in-person tours and open house days, which you can explore at scad.edu forward slash visit. We do request that you make an appointment with us first so we can make sure we can accommodate you. And in the meantime, be sure to check us out on all of our social media platforms. We have an incredible YouTube channel that will let you explore some of our signature events like the fashion show or film festival, and even meet some of our highlighted alumni like Christopher. And for those of you who are ready to get the jumpstart on your career right now, grab your phone, take this time and scan my QR code. This will only take you about two minutes to fill out this form and we'll be able to send you custom content and invitations, whether that's to an event locally in your area or a virtual event in your area of interest. And then this is me, my name is Leah Bear. Again, I'm an assistant director of admission here at SCAD and I really appreciate your time this evening.
Great, thank you so much, Leah. Our next presentation this evening comes to us from James Madison University. Thank you. Good, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Tarlberg, and I am an assistant director with the Office of Admissions at James Madison University. I am excited to talk to you about JMU today a little bit. Uh, some fast facts about JMU. We are one of the state public institutions here in Virginia, and we are located in the Shenandoah Valley right off of I-81. We're about a two-hour drive from the Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia metro area, also a two-hour drive from the Richmond area. We're located in the city of Harrisonburg, which is a city of 50,000. Uh, it's a very beautiful area, as you can maybe see from this uh, slide here. Uh, we're surrounded by mountains, and our campus is spread over 700 acres, uh, and we have lots of things for our students to do here. Uh, we do have a population of about 22,000 students with 20,000 undergrads. Uh, that means we focus on the undergraduate experience, and that you can see from the statistic on the slide, 94% uh, of our population of students are undergraduates. Uh, we're also a liberal arts institution. We have over 130 different programs of study, uh, and because we're a liberal arts institution, that means our students are uh, introduced to a number of different disciplines before they graduate, graduate, and our graduates go out into the world with having been exposed to a lot of different disciplines. Uh, and that is something that employers really look for. Uh, it may seem like a big number when you see that 22,000 or 20,000 undergraduates, and it is, but we've been able to retain the feel of a much smaller school. Uh, we do that through smaller class sizes. Uh, our average class size is 27. We have a 16 to one student to teacher ratio. And then just the culture of GMU, we hold the doors for each other. Uh, you have a lot of support from faculty, staff, and students through our peer advising, one-on-one, -on -one working with professors. Um, and another thing that, that really talks about JMU that helps maintain that smaller school feel is the relationships our students can build with faculty. Uh, we do offer uh, our undergraduates a lot of great research opportunities, and 80% of our students uh, either do research, a practicum, or an internship, uh, or they student teach before they graduate. So no matter what you're studying, you will possibly be able to research with your professor if you like to do that. Our students are also very involved. We have over 400 different clubs and organizations and our, we're very school spirited as well, as you can see, uh, most of us are, we all wear our school colors. The support and opportunities provided by JMU translates to the working world too. And JMU was rated by the US Department of Education as the number one best college for employment in the state of Virginia. And that's because 98% of our 2019 graduates were employed in, in grad school or involved in other career related endeavors within six months of graduation. And that's a statistic that we're really, really proud of. Now that you know a little bit more about JMU, uh, talk a little bit about the transfer process here for you. Uh, we do require an online application. Uh, JMU has its own. We're also part of the coalition application. And starting in the fall, we'll be joining the common application as well. You don't have a preference for which one you use. Whichever one seems to be the easiest for you is the one that you should choose. We have three major deadlines for transfer students. We will um, October 1 for spring transfer students, February 1 for summer transfer students, and March 1 for fall transfer students. We really focus on your transcripts, um, and so we do need your official transcripts from both high school and college. Uh, any colleges that you've attended, we will need those to help us make that decision. We don't need your test scores. We don't accept them for transfer students. So don't worry about that so much. Uh, that uh, up here we have, uh, for more information, you are welcome to uh, scan that QR code. Uh, my email address is on there as well. And like I said, I'm one of the assistant directors here at JMU. I do work heavily with the transfer process and I do like to answer questions from students about the transfer process. So uh, thank you for your time this evening and uh, happy to answer whatever questions you might have. Great, thank you so much. Just a reminder to all of our viewers that the Q&A widget is available if you have questions specific for a given institution or broader ones that you would like all of our representatives to answer. Up next, I'm pleased to introduce Trinity Washington University.
You are muted. There we go. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can now. Perfect. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Trinity's College of Arts and Sciences virtual question and answer. My name is Danny A. Vargas, and I am Trinity's transfer enrollment recruiter. For the agenda today, we have fast facts, campus resources, student life, overview of the College of Arts and Sciences, transferring credits, degree requirements, tuition, financial aid, admissions, and questions. Trinity was established in 1897 as Trinity College as the first Catholic liberal arts college for women in the US. We are conveniently located in the Brooklyn neighborhood of DC, minutes from the Brooklyn Metro, which is the red line for us. We have under 2000 students and we have a very diverse population of 75% African-American and 15% Latina. We are comprised of five academic schools, College of Arts and Sciences, School of Nursing and Health Professions, School of, Business, School of Professional Studies, School of Business and Graduate Studies, and the School of Education. We have a couple of campus resources. We have career services, which um, helps with resume workshops, career fairs, internships, and job placements. We also have academic support, like the, the Writing Center, which is where students can come in and bring a resume or any kind of paper that they need help on uh, for like formatting and things of that nature. And we also have student-led tutoring. Uh, we also have the Health and Wellness Center, where students can seek medical and counseling services, and also um, students can seek help with adjusting to college life. We also have Sports and the Wellness Center, where students can have a free membership to our weight and exercise room and fitness classes with instructors. We also have Disability Support Services, which ensures equal access, promotes self-advocacy and awareness. As far as student life, we are NCAA Division III sports, which means that we don't give scholarships to students to play sports, but you can very well participate. We have sports like soccer, basketball, softball, volleyball, and tennis. We also have student government councils like president and vice president of each class where students can advocate for student needs and organize events. We also have student clubs and organizations. We have more than 15 clubs. Uh, we have clubs like the Muslim Club, Psychology Club, or the Butterfly Network, which is an all-inclusive uh, club for undocumented students and their allies. We also have academic and service opportunities where students can have experiment, experiential learning. Um, they can have undergraduate research, uh, for example, the Mellon Grant. Uh, students can have internships and practicum experiences. We also have study abroad where students can study outside of the US for as long as a year or as little as two weeks. Students typically go to Egypt, Mexico, Japan, Senegal, and more. Uh, we also offer volunteer service um, or experience where your students can go to the Capital Area Food Bank, the Cavalry, Christian Academy and more. And we also have alternative spring break where students go to Alabama for a week and they do service there. Uh, we have, um, as far as our College of Art and Sciences, we are a daytime women only college degree program where we have 21 majors and which are the ones above and we have nine minors, which are the ones that are below. Transferring credits to Trinity is actually pretty easy. We accept the maximum of 75 credits, um, which the final 45 out of the 60 credits must be earned at Trinity. We accept credits for the following courses, um, whether, so you have to have earned a C grade or higher, or there must be a, a hundred level or higher to be able to count, to be, to come here. Um, transferring credits, the process is basically you getting accepted to Trinity, once you're accepted, you will complete your DOI form, which is our Declaration of Intent, which lets us know that you will be attending Trinity in the fall. And then you can register for a Start Strong Registration Workshop. And then you will be able to put in contact with your assigned academic advisor. And she will be able to guide you in the classes that you have taken, things that you have brought in, and then the things, the classes that you will need to take next while you register. And then you just register for classes with that advisor. As far as degree requirements, um, you are required to take 22 electives and 24, uh, 54 gen ed credits and 45 towards your major, which your advisor will have a list for you and they will be able to guide you throughout the process. As far as tuition and financial aid, our school does cost $24,700 a year, which is full time and generally ranges from 12 to 18 credits. If you are a part time student, then your credit hour would cost $770. Um, there is also a $300 enrollment fee, which is a one time fee, and also a fee for $250, uh, which is a health fee per year. And we also have a $1,810 health insurance fee per year as well and 160 uh, student activity fee per year. Every student that is admitted to our CAS program receives a scholarship of up to 15,000. 
And these are the links for you to be able to reach out to the federal financial aid to apply there. This is Trinity school, clo school code provided there. And um, we also offer the DC Mayoral uh, Scholarship, DC TAG, and this is for DC residents only. We also offer the Dream.us, which is a scholarship for DACA recipients and all undocumented students and TPS. And there are additional fees for room and board, meal plans, and nursing students can be found at this below link. Applying to Trinity is fairly easy. Uh, it's actually on our Trinity website, which is trinitydc.edu. It's in the far right corner in yellow. It says apply here. Once you submit your application, you have to submit um, all official transcripts from every school that you have attended. Um, and if you have less than 24 college credits, you have to submit your high school transcript. Um, you have also you, you have to also submit a one page essay, uh, which explains why you're interested in pursuing your major of choice, the strengths that will help you succeed and any weaknesses that you're hoping to overcome, and also one letter of recommendation. Our applications are free and there are no deadlines because we have rolling admissions. Thank you, everyone, and I will take any questions that everyone else may have. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Just a reminder to submit any questions that you have using the Q&A widget. And now I'm pleased to introduce our final presentation, which comes to us from Averett University. Hey guys, my name is Matthew. I'm the Associate Director of Missions here for Averett. Uh, so we're gonna just chat for a while. Um, with transfers, there's all, there's all these very personal conversations. So uh, we're gonna kind of go through this and give some general terms, but kind of focus a little bit on the, on, on the transfer conversation. All right. So who is Averitt? So where are we? So we're located in Danville, Virginia. We actually have five total campuses uh, in the city. Uh, if you ever were to come to Danville, you're gonna notice that we are a city of churches as well as a city of old, beautiful Victorian homes. Uh, so as Averitt started growing, we cannot start tearing down churches and people's homes to build campus. So we actually have uh, five campuses total all located within uh, residential neighborhoods. We have about a thousand undergraduate students here at the university. I mean, in a pretty even split, about 50-50 male, female. Um, we're very proud of our international population as well as our, our, our population of diverse students here on campus. Uh, so you see those represented there, but uh, more importantly, as a university, who are we? So we, we believe in a very, very small school approach to, to the university. So average class size is between 10 and 12. And it's cliche to talk about, but as you actually get into your major, you're gonna find those classes get even smaller because we, we want you to have that personal attention with the faculty members. So meaning um, you can expect some of your senior classes and senior seminars to only have between three and four students in them. So where is Danville? So Danville is located in the southern part of Virginia. Uh, we are right on the, on the Dan River. So we kind of in a very energetic river district, very uh, fast paced growing environment. Uh, Danville is a very active community. We, we believe in active lifestyle. So you're gonna see that kind of represented here. And then also we're kind of the culture hub for Southside Virginia. Uh, so we take great pride in, um, in our arts and, and cultural and entertainment scenes here. Uh, but also I think kind of comes from that past of the churches. We have a service mentality. Uh, so you're gonna find a lot of people here in the city give back. Um, as someone said earlier, you're gonna see people hold doors and things like that. Um, that kind of transpires all the way into our community. So you're gonna see a very loving um, and kind of uh, cultivating culture here in Danville. So student life, so getting into student life, I mean, one thing that we do things a little different here is being such a small school, we have an expectation that you are a part of our community. Uh, so students are able to kind of go and do their own thing, obviously, um, but you're actually gonna be kind of recruited uh, from student engagement from the beginning. So as whether you're a transfer student or whether you are a first time freshman, uh, you're gonna actually have people reaching out to you, wanting you to be part of their clubs and organizations. Uh, so something that's a little different um, as from, from other schools. Also here at Averett, you actually have a built-in service um, aspect to your education. We have, a, we have a center here that's kind of the regional hub. Um, actually just got great um, praise from our governor here in the state of Virginia for hosting one of the, the most successful community-based vaccine clinics. Uh, so we at Averett, we, we, we kind of take, take pride in, in serving our community and, and who we are. So let's get into transfer into university. So what we require, we have a free application. Uh, we don't even feel the need to make money off you guys applying to college. Uh, we require at least a minimum 2.0 GPA and at least 12 transferable credit hours. Um, as other schools, we're gonna require official transcripts from all the college you've attended. We wanna see what you're doing. Um, but more importantly, when we start transferring to Averitt, we're gonna have a conversation with you about uh, credits. Uh, one thing that's unique here at Averitt is our gen ed structure. 
Uh, we want as we're a liberal arts school, so which means we want you to be well read. We want you to uh, to be able to have conversations in any setting. But typically, when we talk to students, they don't say they want to major in religion. They don't want to major in philosophy. Uh, but we still want you guys to be exposed to those. So here at Averett, you're not going to necessarily have that huge number of genetic requirements that you might be expecting. Uh, so our, our students here start their major their first year, uh, their first semester on campus. So whether it's aviation, flying airplanes, uh, whether it's nursing, whatever it might be, those students actually start their majors right away. So as a transfer student, you can expect to come right in and start your program. You, should, you, don't, you shouldn't be expecting um, to knock out even more genetic requirements. So just to hear a quick list, obviously this stuff is listed online, but some things that we are um, kind of alluded allude to that are a little different. We actually train commercial pilots here at Avert. Uh, we are one of two schools in the state that still has an equestrian major, not just a riding team. Um, that program has had a 100% job placement rate since I've been here. And so they do a, very, a great job in either working in the equine industry, sales and marketing, or whether it's all the way up through uh, veterinary school. So just a quick list, but what we're known for, um, our, our most popular majors here on campus are biology and pre-med. The reason being, we actually have guaranteed admissions to med school. Um, aviation, uh, we train some of the best teachers in the state of Virginia, so education is a big thing for us as well. Um, nursing, business, kind of those popular majors here. Again, NCAA Division III, we take great pride in athletics. You're going to see a game day atmosphere at Division III school like you're probably not expecting. Um, we also have, offer competitive dance and cheer, cheer teams. I know our cheer team has been past national champions, I think two out of the last five years. Uh, we are one of the first schools in the state to champion esports as an official sport. Uh, for the university, not just a club. So you can expect that here as well, as well as like, so we have competitive riding teams for our equestrian, um, our equestrian students. So visiting the Averitt, what we are expecting, I mean, obviously we want students on campus. I know right now things are a little bit, little bit weird. You can do virtual events and you can talk to people on Zoom, but nothing's like seeing a campus with your own eyes. So we are open for in-person visits uh, Monday through Saturday. So feel free uh, just to reach out to us if you actually want to see the campus and get on ground. And believe it or not, we're, um, Going to be kind of piloting one of the the first um, group events here coming up soon as well here in the spring uh, we have kind of approval from the health department to to kind of run with that so we're excited to get you guys back on campus and kind of have those private conversations when it comes uh, to transferring because like i said we all know they're they're very individual conversations uh, one thing i did want to mention as far as private schools here in the state um, here, if you are familiar with with private schools in virginia you're going to find out there's additional money from the government available to you to attend a private school. It's called VTAC. Uh, it's almost about, it's almost four thousand dollars from the state of Virginia if you choose to attend a private school. So it kind of helps off offset that private school education that you may not think it will, is a, is as affordable as as you might think. Uh, so we're here at Averett. We actually work with you guys through everything. So we'll be here to kind of help you out with that financial conversation as well. Okay. Well, that's it for me. If you guys have questions, feel free to put them in the chat or reach out to us. Uh, we are happy to help, um, but like I said, uh, good luck in your college search, and if we can help out anyway, let us know. Great, thank you so much. At this point, we'll bring back all of our presenters as we have just a few minutes remaining in this um, webinar. And I think one thing that students are often curious about and looking um, to learn about an institution is what one kind of event or tradition that's particularly unique to your campus, um, what they would find at your institution. And we can go in the same order as our initial presentations. Yeah, so I did not attend East Carolina, full disclosure, but I have interacted with our students on a professional level um, many times. And the one event that I wish I would have went to East Carolina for was Pirate Palooza. So Pirate Palooza is an event at the beginning of the year. It welcomes back our students and welcomes our new students. Um, and there's just so much to do. They have all of the student activities out there. They have like bouncy houses, live music, food, and just so many fun things out there. And it's just such a great vibe. It sounds like, you know, from what our students say that, um, yeah, like I said, it, it, it makes me, it would convince me to go to East Carolina if I was looking for college right now. So that's, uh, that's my answer for that. <laughs> Uh, my answer may not be the most unique experience in terms of the fact that 
a lot of colleges have football games and basketball games, but I will say the football games and the basketball games at the University of Pittsburgh are definitely very popular. Um, they're the student cheering sections are always very lively, very engaged. Um, our football team actually plays at Heinz Field, which is where the Steelers play. So it's a really neat experience to go to the football games at an NFL stadium. Um, there's never a shortage of seats, obviously. So student tickets for football games are very cheap as well. Um, basketball games also really exciting. The uh, student cheering section is called the Oakland Zoo. I definitely recommend looking them up because they can get really uh, silly and very creative in the sort of themes that they come up with for uh, various games. Um, and it's just a very fun and exciting experience for students to uh, explore, um, you know, and experience those those types of uh, pit traditions. Hey, from SCAD, I would say some of my favorite events to attend are what we call our signature event series. So our largest event that we host is in the fall. It is a film festival, It's actually the largest student um, university run film festival in the world. And we do it big. We shut down Main Street. We have red carpets. We have guests from all around the world, producers, actors. We do movie screenings. And all of our students have the chance to interact with those guests that we brought in for the week. So that's one of our best signature events. We also host other ones similarly that feature our television programs, our game programs, and then, of course, our highlight fashion show for our seniors in May, where we have an amazing full run fashion show. If any of you guys, I'm hoping you guys are old enough since you're transfer students, any America's Next Top Model fans, Ms. J actually comes in and teaches our student models how to walk. So that is probably my favorite thing that SCAD has to offer. I think uh, the, uh, the event that I think of, that I just am impressed with at JMU the most is what we call the big event. Um, so our student body is very uh, community service oriented and every spring we host a big event, they call it. So all of our student organizations, many different departments across campus organize some kind of community service for this big event day, usually takes place on a Saturday in April. Um, but not only that, our alumni chapters around the country and all of our students who are studying abroad also participate in the big event. So there is this JMU community giving back everywhere there are JMU students and alumni around the world. And I just, that is just a really cool kind of way that JMU likes to give back to the communities that they're involved with. Uh, my favorite event at Trinity is actually Founders Day. Um, I was actually a student at Trinity. I just graduated in May. Um, so we are a very small school where, you know, we have under 2000 students. So we actually do a big cookout and the, the, the dining hall actually goes outdoors and they make hamburgers and hot dogs and they set up tables for everyone. And everyone knows who everyone is because we're so small. So it just feels like you are at your family's gathering. So that is my favorite thing because then everyone has plates of food everywhere you go, whether it's class, that even the professors are late because everyone is trying to get hamburgers and hot dogs and just be outside and enjoy the nice weather with all the students. So that's my favorite day at Trinity. And unfortunately, we didn't have it this year due to COVID, but hopefully um, we will begin to have it since Trinity will be opening full on in August. So here at Averett, actually, to echo Chris, we have an event we call Day to Engage, where very similar to our alumni and our community and our all of our students get involved in some type of project of their choice. So that's, for me, that's personally what I like to see because I know I see the difference it makes in everyone's community. But from a personal aspect, uh, I think my favorite event here at Averett is actually our senior painting. Um, our, every one of our seniors here gets to choose personally the faculty member they want to greet them on stage at graduation and put their pin on. And so I think that's probably just, we talk about being a family and we talk about a community and how else to be a family if you if you can't choose the person who puts, puts the robe on. And so that's probably my favorite tradition here at Avery. Great. Thank you so much for sharing those traditions and events as well as your institutions overall with us. And thank you to our viewers for joining us this evening. At the end of this webinar, you'll be prompted with a brief four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback that you could provide. Also, just a reminder that this is one of many sessions being hosted as part of this college fair, and recordings of all of them will be available in about a week's time at strivescan.com backslash Virginia. Thanks so much and have a great night.